Okay, we've got Holly from uh, Fremont County Riverton Branch Library who is going to talk about graphic novels for adults for us. And Holly, you're unmuted and you can get started whenever you're ready. Thanks, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. As Sarah said, my name is Holly Hendricks and we're going to talk about graphic novels reader advisory today. Okay. So, so that everyone's on the same page, let's talk about what graphic novels are for a moment. So first and foremost, they are a format and not a genre. So that means that graphic novels encompass all of the genres that you would find with any other kind of novel. So horror, fantasy, science fiction, romance, nonfiction are all encompassed in the format of graphic novels. Um, and when we talk about graphic novels, what we're talking about is a story told to sequential art that has a beginning and a middle and an end. So not a collection of Garfield comic strips or Silbert. These are stories, told to story arcs that have a beginning, middle, and end. And for today's purposes, we are not talking about manga, although they have a lot of similarities with graphic novels. There are some pretty big differences between the two. And at least in my library, I don't see much crossover between the audiences for those. The manga readers like the manga, and the graphic novel readers like the graphic novels. So, some graphic novels encompass all of the genres. They have all the appeal factors that a fiction or non-fiction book would have. Plot, character, setting. I know that these were discussed at length um, in the first webinar that was done for this series. So all of those things apply to graphic novels. But they have um, some different elements, appeal factors, because of the, the visual aspect of them. And the biggest one is visual style. So this would be the art that shows up in the graphic novel. And this is a big appeal for people who like graphic novels, is the style of art. The picture on the screen that we're looking at is from Persepolis. And this is a great, um, a great example of black ink, the visual style, which is two colors, black, usually white, and pretty simple. You also have clear lines, which would be full color images with bounded areas for each hue. Block print, which is emulate styles of past printing. It has an older feel to it. Soft pencil, charcoal, ink washes have a, a softer edge, and details are often blurred in that style. Watercoloring and colored ink, pretty similar to clear line, but it's a little less flat, and the areas for each you are not bounded. And then you also have computer enhanced, digitally created images. So people who really like graphic novels, your avid graphic novel readers, probably have a visual style that they prefer, whether they've ever thought about it or not. So if someone who likes graphic novels and they're looking for recommendations, a good thing to ask them is what kind of visual style they like. Layout is another big appeal factor for graphic novels, and that's the way the panels are arranged that forces the reader to track the narrative flow. Um, the conventional ones, left to right, top to bottom, you see a lot, but it, it can be a lot more complex than that. Um, this picture here is from Watchmen, and the layout of Watchmen is very interesting, very unconventional, it can be a little hard to read. So this is another appeal factor for fans of the format. Some of them will like the more straightforward layout. Some of them will like ones that are more complex, but we can track the narrative flow in a different or unexpected way. This is also a great thing to ask someone who's familiar with the format and is looking for a suggestion from you. Image and text balancing. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. This is how much is image and how much is text. Some graphic novels are really heavy on the text. Um, the pictures I have on the screen are from Rex Libra, which is a great graphic novel if any of you have ever read it. Very amusing. But it's very, very heavy on the text. Um, and some graphic novels that have no text. Some of them few are just pictures entirely. When you're talking to someone who's looking for suggestions in graphic novels, these are all great things to ask them. And these are probably things that maybe they haven't thought about on a conscious level. 
but you can help them narrow it down to find graphic novels that they will be really interested in. It's a basic question to ask the readers, you know, what appeals to them, what subject or genre are they interested in, how familiar are they with what's available, the new books that are coming out, the older ones. Basic questions really that you would ask about it to anyone who is looking for a recommendation for any kind of book. Graphics and traditional readers. Um, we have a, a pretty nice collection here at the Riverton Library, and some people come in specifically for the graphic novels, and they love them, and they check them out all the time. But something that I see happen a lot is adults ignoring them because of some misconceptions they have about them. There's still kind of a stigma attached to them a little bit, that they're only for adolescents, or that they're only for people who aren't very good readers. And that's just not true. There are a lot of people out there who would probably really like graphic novels that are a little bit, I don't want to say intimidated by them, maybe that's the case with some of them. They have these misconceptions. So part of their job is to help connect people with stories and formats that maybe they didn't know they wanted to read. So there's some ways to do that. And then the genre. So if someone comes to you and says, I'm looking for mystery books, you could pull some mystery books for them and maybe pull a graphic novel that is also a mystery and see if they're interested. They might really like it. They might not. But that's a good way. If they say, I like this genre, you can pull a graphic novel that fits into that genre because we, they come in all genres. Um, graphic adaptations. We're seeing more and more of these lately. So they're retelling classic novels in graphic form. And some of them, not very well done. A person I have not friends pretty just was awful. <laughs> and that's a story that I really like. But some of them are excellent. So if someone comes in and says, I'm looking for a new Android Dream of Electric Sheets, you could give them a book, but you could also say, oh, we have this graphic novel, and maybe they would be interested in it. Another thing that I'm doing is novelists more and more are starting to write graphic novels. Stephen King just came out with, or he did part of American Vampire, which is a great graphic novel. Um, Jody Pizzolet did Wonder Woman. More and more we're seeing some really popular, well-known authors starting to write specifically for the graphic novel format. And that's a great way to get people interested in graphic novels. They like Stephen King, you can have them and medium high-end. Movie books and graphic novels have gone huge. Um, I believe that some of the top of the movies of last year were based on graphic novels. So people see the movie, they come in, they're interested in reading graphic novels. That's great. Also video games. The Looking for Group is based on World of Warcraft, which is an online role-playing game. But I've seen one for Halo. I believe there's a couple for Call of Duty. So that's a good way to get people interested in the format as well. If they see something that ties into it in another form of media, they may come looking for the graphic novel. Just a few of the most well-known graphic novel authors. These people have all been around for a while. Most of them have a lot of work out, and it seems to be really good. resources. The biggest, the biggest thing for advising graphic novels is you have to have a little bit of experience with having read them. You don't have to read everything that comes out, but you have to have read enough to know what you like and what you don't like, and to be able to discern what um, your patrons are saying to you when they're telling you what you like and what they like and don't like. So you have to stay up with it a little bit. All these publications here do reviews of graphic novels. And last year, the New York Times started a bestseller list for graphic novels, which is really handy for collection development. It does only with hardback, though, so the trade paperbacks are left out to kind of use the numbers. But it's a very good tool to have. There are awards specifically for graphic novels, like the Will Eisner Comic Industry Award is probably the biggest one. But you also have the Harvey Award. Hugo Award, which is actually science fiction, but they've started um, letting graphic novels in that are in that genre, and the Trivia Award. 
Five books, so five hundred different graphic novels is a really great tool. So we're five the graphic novels is also great. And specifically for readers advisory, the readers advisory guide to graphic novels is very comprehensive. No worry, but it's a good read. We also have some big comic conferences every year, and if you can, going to one of those is great. You will be exposed to all kinds of things that have no idea you need to. <laughs> so, the big one is an International Comic Con in San Diego, and that's where they present the Eisner Awards every year. It's also one in New York, and there's one that's con in San Francisco. Those are the biggest three, although they have weird little comic conferences all over the country at any given time. Uh, online resources, Ravel.org is a, a really good one for reviews, as is Graphic Novel Reporter. Diamond Comics, they do, uh, for example, statistics every month for top-selling graphic novels, which publish housing, which, excuse me, which publishers um, have sold the most or doing the best. So that's good if you're looking for that kind of information. Comic book movie, which I will bring up here, is a really good resource for getting information about what movies are coming out soon or in production that are based on graphic novels. So that's a good thing to keep on top of too. Yeah. When uh, Watchmen came out, that graphic novel had been around for well oh, since before I was born. <laughs> basically. <laughs> and we had it, and it got picked out occasionally. Then the movie came out, and everybody wanted to read it. So it's good to stay on top of that for collection development. That way you know what your patients are going to be coming in and looking for. And if anyone has questions, you can write my email address, and I'm more than happy to answer them. That's it. Great. Thank you very much, Holly. Um, good, good information. I think, you know, there so, some libraries, it sounds like yours is one of them, have been really um, quick to, to you know, respond to the graphic novel interest. And, you know, it's, it's been, I, I have seen it in public libraries happening over the course of the last five to ten years, and some libraries are not. One, um, I'll open it up again to questions. Again, you can... Uh, text your question in the chat box um, or raise your hand if you want to share your question with the group. I have a question for you first, Holly, while we're waiting for others to come in. Um, where, since it sounds like you have a pretty decent graphic novel collection at, at your branch or maybe other branches in Fremont County as well, where do you um, shelve your graphic novels? Where would we be lucky? Uh, the friends of the library bought us a beautiful shelving unit that, that downstairs in the adult area. We keep the adult and the YA graphic novels there because we found when we had the two split that the people who were coming in looking for graphic novels didn't know they were in two different places. And there's a lot of crossover between those two. So we have adult and YA all on one shelving unit. It's in, <laughs> that no, that's wonderful. I'm really excited to hear that, and I would love, I personally would love to see more of that. Several of the the public libraries that I worked at in Colorado still kind of, maybe they have a sign that says graphic novels, but they're still kind of inched over in the teen area, and and I find that that can be you know sort of intimidating for adults. Again, you talked about those misconceptions that graphic novels are just for teens, and I feel like it can work in uh, you know it has several disadvantages you know one maybe an adult reader might feel like silly uh, you know or feel bad about going to the teen section because like oh they think they're for kids or also feel bad because you know they're an adult lurking in the teen area so um, and one of the last libraries I worked at we tried to split them up by kid teen and adult but then we ended up with like two books that had like really sexually explicit um, uh, image imagery shoved in adults somewhere that nobody was ever going to find. So I, I'm I'm excited to hear that, and and certainly thinking about um, some of our presentations in April, we talked quite a bit about merchandising. So that's a huge. Um, piece there. Um, and I have one other question since I don't see any others coming through as well. Um, do you do you have um, a success story with um, turning a patron on to graphic novels that maybe wasn't a graphic novel reader? And if so, how did that work for you? Um, I'm not sure if I can answer that. 
Um, actually, several months ago, well, it would have been one several months ago, but we had several book groups here in the library, mostly comprised of older women, and they were reading, oh, I can't even remember what they were reading. No, I don't think that was it. But she came to the desk and asked for the book that they were reading, and we had it, she got it. But I also said, we have a graphic novel adaptation of this book. Would you be interested? She went, she took it home, had never read a graphic novel before, brought it back, and enjoyed it. And since then, she's checked out several more graphic novels. And this a woman in her 60s, maybe 70s, not what you, your typical market for graphic novels. Definitely. No, thank you for sharing that. And because I, I'm, I was... I'm still an apprehensive graphic novel reader myself. I'm actually just going to take back the screen and I want to share an older book that um, I liked because when you were talking about that visual um, aspect is, is the part that I struggle with with graphic novels, um, that it's a very nonlinear way to read. And this is a pretty old book, but I and I was introduced to it in a literature class years ago, and it's called Understanding Comics. And I think there are a few others out there um, on how to read graphic novels and how to read comics. Um, but this, uh, th this was one thing that got me to get over my my mental block about reading in a non-linear fashion so I just wanted to to share that with the group it might be something that's in your collection I think it's like from the 90s or something but yeah it's a great book uh, and one more thing when we're talking about marketing and where you place your graphic novel collection you need to give them shelving where they can be face out where people can see the covers by and large because that's really what draws people in a lot of the time is the art and being able to see the covers will really help your graphic novels be checked out more often. You know, if you shelve them in nonfiction and facing in, people aren't going to know that they're there and they're going to sit on the shelf for the most part unless people come specifically looking for them. So having them send someplace where people can see them or in the middle of the action they can see the covers, that really helps sell your graphic novel collection. Very, very good point. Um, I am seeing that we do have a question um, from Natalie. I see your hand raised, Natalie. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you if you want to. You're unmuted now if you have a mic and you want to share your question. If you don't have a mic, then you'll want to go ahead and type a question in and I'll share it with the group. Are you there, Natalie? Okay, looks like Natalie might have stepped away from her desk. Okay, um, well, thank you for sharing your email too with us, Holly. So certainly feel free to uh, um, email Holly if you have any other questions. Uh, remember, both presentations will be archived on getonthebuswyoming.wordpress.com. And that concludes today's presentation. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Sarah.